supracondylar fracture of the humerus. It is a very important fracture because it is the commonest fracture in the elbow region in children. Much more common in boys. Um, logically, from its name, what is the site of the fracture? Supracondylar. This is called the medial epicondyle. And this is the lateral epicondyle. And you look now from posterior view to the humerus. It is called the epicondyle or condyle. And therefore, supracondylar fracture occur just above the level of the medial and the lateral epicondyles. Passing through this fossa. What is this fossa? It is uh, a fossa uh, made by this prominent bone, which is the olecranon process. And this fossa on the back of the humerus is called the olecranon fossa. Therefore, supracondylar fracture occurs just above the medial and the lateral epicondyles, passing through the olecranon fossa. What is the classification of this fracture? As usual, according to the relation of the distal fragment to the proximal fragment. This is the commonest type. The distal fragment is posterior, posterior towards the olecranon. In relation to the proximal fragment, which is anterior. According to the relation between posterior distal fragment, which is towards the extensors, towards the triceps. Therefore, this type is called extension type, and it is the commonest type, representing about 99% of supracondylar fractures. In contrast to this rare 1% in this type, the distal fragment is anterior towards the flexors in relation to this proximal fragment. Therefore, this type is called the flexion type. Uh, both types, extension and deflection type, we said before, much more common uh, in children, and uh, about 50% uh, uh, green stick fracture, and 50% uh, complete fracture. What is the etiology of each type? In extension type, an extension type usually the cause is fall on outstretched hand with the forearm pronated. Why? Fall on outstretched hand with the forearm pronated. And we said before that in uh, indirect trauma there is action and the counter action. And the site of meeting between the action and the counteraction, fracture occur. If you fall on outstretched hand with the forearm brunated and slightly flexed, if you fall on this position, the action and the counteraction from the body weight meet in the distal part of the humerus, leading to extension type in this position. Fall on outstretched hand, but the elbow is slightly flexed and the forearm is brunated. Therefore, the action from fall on the ground and the counter action from the body weight meet in the distal part of the humerus leading to extension type of supracondylar fracture. In contrast to this type, inflection type, inflection type, 
the patient fall on the flexed elbow fall on the flexed elbow and the direction of trauma from posterior to anterior leading to fracture in the distal part of the humerus and the pushing of the distal fragment anteriorly leading to flexion type in contrast to fall on outstretched hand with the elbow slightly flexed the trauma comes from anterior to posterior the fracture occur and the trauma push the distal fragment posteriorly towards the extensors therefore this type is called extension type um, the line of fracture may uh, be oblique fracture or transverse fracture the distal fragment displaced or undisplaced <coughs> therefore according to the displacement there is undisplaced type and displaced type if there is displacement in extension type in extension type from its definition the distal fragment is displaced backwards and usually with some angulation displaced backward but the bone here is not straight there is angulation posterior displacement with angulation and usually there is overriding with upward displacement and the distal fragment usually pronated why the distal fragment with the forearm the forearm is pronated during the trauma and after fracture the distal fragment is taken by the radius and the ulna into pronation the distal fragment uh, may displace from side to side medial or lateral displacement this is the extension type backward displacement with angulation upward displacement with overriding pronation with the forearm according to the position of fall on outstretched hand with the forearm pronated and there is medial or lateral displacement in flexion type from uh, its definition flexion type the distal fragment is displaced the forward and the upward with the trauma forward and upward and there is medial or lateral displacement complication much much more common with the rear type with flexion type in the common type which is extension type complication is less common what is uh, the suspected uh, classification of the commonest type the classification of the commonest type which is extension type is called Gartnell's Gartnell's classification Gartnell's classification uh, classify the fracture into three degrees Gartnell's classify type 1 as undisplaced fracture while type 2 type 2 there is angulation but the posterior cortex is still intact fracture occur but the posterior cortex is intact with angulation this is a severe type 3 complete fracture no cortical contact and the posterior displacement of the distal fragment this is uh, the Gartnerland classification what is uh, the complications of uh, this uh, fracture um, this is uh, another drawing for the flexion type in which the distal fragment is displaced forward anteriorly toward the flexors therefore it's called deflection 
and this fall on slightly flexed elbow with the distal fragment displaced with the direction of trauma upward and backward. Um, the first complication is male union. Normally, uh, I will ask you a slight uh, question. Is the uh, long axis of the arm and the locking axis of the forearm on the same line? Of course not. This is the long axis of the arm. And this is the long axis of the forearm. There is here a slight degree called normally carrying angle. If male union occur, the distal fragment displaced medially or laterally, and the healing occur. Male union. Male union may result in cubitus valgus. Cubitus valgus, which means lateral displacement of the forearm. And here there is increase in the carrying angle. While the distal fragment may displace the medially and healing occur. This leads to decrease in the carrying angle. And this is called cubitus verus. In all cases, there is cubitus. Cubitus means the elbow region. Valgus means abduction, deformity, lateral displacement. Verus means adduction deformity or medial deformity. This is the long axis of the arm and this is the long axis of the forearm. Normally there is angle called the carrying angle. Increase in the carrying angle is called cubitus valgus. Decrease means cubitus verus. Um, one of the main complications here is the elbow region is surrounded by the main three nerves in the upper limb. Ulnar on the medial aspect, radial on the lateral aspect, and the median nerve in between. If there is supracondylar fracture here, the sharp fragment may lead to injury of any of these nerves median, ulnar, or radial. Commonly, the commonest nerve injury here is median nerve. Um, also, this artery. This artery, which is the brachial artery. And usually, the sharp edge of the proximal fragment may lead to damage of the brachial artery leading to acute ischemia. If not relieved probably, lead to one of the following. Either gangrene is rare in the upper limb due to good collaterals, but usually lead to Volkmann's ischemic contracture. Um, if uh, we remember what are the commonest sites for myositis ossificans. Injuries around the elbow. Therefore, sobracondylar fracture may lead to myositis ossificans. Finally, if physiotherapy and the early movement of elbow region is neglected, a stiffness of elbow joint will occur. Therefore, uh, there is Complication, male union leading to cubitus valgus or verus. Three nerve injuries, radial, median, ulnar, commonly median. Injury of the brachial artery leading to acute ischemia. If the condition is not diagnosed and relieved early, leading to gangrene or myositis ossificans. Uh, or uh, Volkmann's ischemic contracture. Also, elbow region is uh, one of the common sites for myositis ossificans and the stiffness of elbow may occur. 
what is the clinical picture of this patient? The clinical picture of this patient is better studied on this drawing. Uh, also, as a complication, compartment syndrome may occur. Compartment syndrome here in the cubital fossa due to edema hemorrhage in closed facial compartment leading to compression of brachial artery, radial artery, or median nerve. Um, what is the clinical picture? As usual, as usual, uh, in the general rules of fractures. Uh, the characteristic diagnostic feature of supracondylar fracture is the deformity. In both flexion type and extension type, what is the deformity? Flexion of elbow. But if you feel the olecranon projecting backward, this means that the olecranon projecting backward with the distal fragment of the humerus. And if the distal fragment of the humerus is projecting backward, it is extension type of supracondylar fracture. But if there is flexion of the elbow, and during palpation, the olecranon is felt displaced anteriorly, with the distal fragment displaced anteriorly, therefore this is the flexion type. Um, one of the most important uh, features in this patient is uh, to examine for neurovascular injuries. Examine sensation, motor examination for radial, median, ulnar nerve injuries. Also vascular, coldness, distal pulsation, radial pulse, sensation, motor examination for manifestations of acute ischemia. Um, it is uh, very important in uh, this uh, patient to differentiate to differentiate uh, this patient, which is a common type, extension type. Extension type, there is selection with prominent to recreate, backward. Also, this patient, there is selection of elbow and the prominent olecranon backward. What is this? This is posterior dislocation of elbow joint. And therefore, in clinical picture, we should mention this important differential diagnosis. What is the difference between extension type of supracondylar fracture and posterior dislocation? We will continue uh, this differential diagnosis in the next video. Thank you for good listening and good luck.